So text is everywhere and an important aspect to everyday life. Think of this, you wake up in the morning, you look online for the weather report and news. Maybe you bought a new jelly this week and aren't you curious what's in it? Heading into work, you might hit a detour. Once there, you check your email, make a list of things to do. Once you get there, your workday includes a various, uh, various reading related activities from uh, reading reports, from reading signs, from communicating messages with your colleagues. After work, it's time to head home, stop at the grocery store, pick up something for dinner. Maybe you'll be reading the labels to make choices. Later, you're looking up a uh, time of a special award show tonight. The thing is, your day-to-day -day life is filled with text. Research has connected the ability to access text with education, employment, and social outcomes. The ability to access text enables some element of personal control and social connectedness. In addition, reading for leisure opens up worlds of imagination and possibility that can enlighten and inspire. In school, students learn to access text early through practice and reading and comprehension skills. Later on in junior elementary, senior elementary, and secondary school, the focus shifts from learning to read to that of reading to learn. Students are expected to use their access to support and show their knowledge and understanding across various content areas. My central research focuses on students with significant support needs, as was just mentioned in the introduction. Those are students with autism, intellectual disability, or multiple disabilities. These students comprising some 2% of the population often require the most intensive support needs to experience success in school. The research uh, shows that these students are often limited in their access to text. Be it for text for leisure or be it text for learning, many factors that limit these students, uh, many factors limit these students access um, and some of that is related to the nature of disability, whether it be limited memory and early developmental learning and foundational skills. In addition to that, research has found that these students are also held back by, this is the really tough part, but insufficient instruction, inadequate learning and support materials, and low expectations. Often accessing text becomes reliant on reading ability, something which students struggle, especially as they age and the gap between their uh, ability and their age widens. On this note, it's important to stop and make note of the term age-appropriate literature. This refers to content that makes sense for a student's age, regardless of their decoding and comprehension ability. You'll see an example here um, in the picture. There's an abundance of level learning materials for younger students, but much less for older students. Uh, the picture on the text is a reader for younger students. The one on the right was something, a, a typical text for uh, middle school students. We know that students can learn to decode and comprehend text. However, age ability gap is wide. We know that read alouds can help students successfully access text beyond their reading level. Much of this research has been using adapted text like the ones shown here, reduced language complexity uh, and simple recall activities with young students and one-on-one. -on -one. My work in this area extends the previous work by looking at age appropriate unadapted text read aloud, embedding visuals and discursive supports increased assessment diversity, and including peers without disabilities. The shorthand title for my method um, is PPD. It stands for picture plus discussion, and picture and discussion are the two essential elements of the uh, intervention. The model makes use of methods commonly employed in teaching, such as using representative images to lock imagery in place, dialogue as a social exercise, and to welcome and connect background knowledge to the text. The specific steps of the intervention are supported um, as follows. And you can see the list here, present the supports, it will show the images, uh, open-ended discussion, invite the students' background knowledge in, structured discussion to help the student connect the images to their background knowledge, reading the text, and then a structured discussion to further make those connections between the pictures, the background knowledge, and the text. And my series of uh, three studies along this line are uh, in the, middle school or junior, senior, elementary, high school, secondary. Um, text included short level readers at grade level as well as newspaper clippings and job training manuals, uh, segments of those for secondary students. The assessments that I focused on, uh, comprehension was measured in that assessment in various ways, including multiple choice questions, story retail and engagement behaviors. A multi-probe single case research design was used to assess the effect of the intervention on student comprehension compared to shared text without any intervention. So like I said before, it's a series of three studies. The middle school study uh, was the first of the set, um, and I found repeated occurrences of success with the PPD 
intervention, even given the complexity of the text compared to the student's reading level and their experience, as well as the variability among participants. The short of it was that students generally comprehended the text better with PPD than without it. And then moving to the next one, with a secondary students, I introduced a new measure, story retell, to assess comprehension. Students responded to the prompt, what do you remember about the text? That was coded into idea units, which was coded as either relevant or irrelevant. And this for a group of students who struggled with verbal communication was likely the most exciting finding as students went from nearly nothing to say without intervention to lots to say with PPD intervention about the text that they just read. And finally, the last one in the series is based on elementary. And the biggest change on this one, it was the more socially oriented version of the intervention with the peer involved. Um, and the findings were similar to those repeated. There was some evidence that peer supports can be helpful in this sense. Uh, in general terms, we know that text to access or access to text matters. This package of research shows that students can gain access to text beyond their reading level. The PPD intervention is teacher friendly, a simple way to structure supports that many teachers are already familiar with. Simple and structured, I should say. Uh, in a small way, this research has reiterated the idea that students should and can have access to age appropriate and unadapted text. In addition, findings opened up some additional options in comprehension assessment for a population that is often considered difficult to accurately assess. It's been exciting, I would say personally, it's been exciting to be a part of a small part of this research group that um, is discovering more feasible, useful, and meaningful ways to provide access to curriculum and general academ academic life skills. Future research will combine, uh, or continue, sorry, to push boundaries in the area of comprehension access as in others. So thanks a lot for your interest and time and uh, the ability to share with you.